Well, good morning and welcome to Oasis of Life Ministries. You're joining us in the midst of our service here. We've had a wonderful time in praise and worship. Amen. We're coming to you from downtown snowy Johnstown <laughs> and cold, but it's warm in here. Amen. Amen. So we thank you for joining us on Facebook and YouTube this morning. And we pray right now that you receive from God what he intends for you to get here today. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this opportunity to open up your word and open up our hearts to hear from you, to hear your voice in this place. Holy Spirit, I have given you my voice and you use my voice in this place today to bring forth a message from the Heavenly Father to our hearts. We do it all today and, and those right now, I pray for those right now who are here and who are watching, who need a healing in their body, that the anointing flows right through to them and touches that ailment in their body and removes it right now. We thank you. You have sickness and disease has no right to God's people. Amen. We loose the healing blood and the healing anointing upon you right now that as we talk and preach and teach the word this morning, healing occurs for everyone in the sound of my voice. And I thank you for it. I praise you, Heavenly Father. I thank you in the marvelous, wonderful, miraculous name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I got to do this this morning. Uh, Brother Larry, we're glad you're joining us, not from the hospital, but you're joining us. And we know that you are healed and well. Amen. Brother Larry ended up in the hospital this week with, week with a heart condition, but he is doing fine as I talked to him last night. We've been praying with him and, and prayer for him all week this week. And he's doing fine, and we're glad you're with, you, with us. So God bless you. Have you got your Bibles with you? Amen. Amen. Then let's turn to them to Psalm 145. Psalm 145. Psalm 145, verse 1. David begins with, I will extol you or lift you up, my God, O King. And I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you. And I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. You know, we could search for the greatness of God through the Bible and we'll find that greatness, but we will never ever exhaust that greatness. We'll be able to search for it forever and see it all the time. Drop down to verse 13. Your kingdom is everlasting, is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord upholds all that fall. And he raises up all those that be bowed down. What he's talking about is those being bowed down. Those who are walking around and are literally spiritually, emotionally, mentally bowed over because they're carrying so much burden. That burden could be a sickness or disease. It could be a lack of poverty where finances are concerned. It could be trouble in relationships. It, it could be just the, the cares of this world that they're carrying. I want to tell you, if that's you this morning, you don't have to carry that. Amen. God said, cast your cares upon me, for I care for you. He's already taken them, give them to him, let him go, and let God handle them. Amen? I saw a sign coming over here out of church this morning. You worry too much. <laughs> God has this. Yep. Amen. God's got it, folks. Amen. There's nothing to worry about. Well, yeah, but have you heard about the government? Have you heard about the economy? Have you heard about the diseases and so on? God's got it. Amen. And he's got the answer for it. Have you heard about God? 
We heard about God. That was God talking from heaven there in case you didn't. <laughs> Amen. He's got it. Amen. Amen. Folks, COVID-19 is nothing for God. That's right. Amen. Nothing to worry about. Jesus took those stripes upon his back, and when he did, he didn't isn't sitting there in heaven right now saying, Oh, Father, I missed that one. <laughs> He got them all, folks. Yes, he did. And it's all ours today. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Verse 15. The eyes of all of all wait upon God. And God gives them, those who are waiting upon, their meat in due season. That meat, if you need healing. Your healing is a meat. If you need finances broke through, that's your meat. If you need relationships repaired, that's a meat. So whatever you're waiting for, this says God is going to give you that meat. Amen. 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 You open your hand and satisfy the desire of of every living thing. God is standing before you right now. And his hands are open to you. And God is saying, let me release my provision from my hands to you. Will you believe and will you receive what I've got for you right now? Just reach out where you're sitting there. What do you need today? A healing. You need finances. You need love. You need a relationship. You need whatever it is. Open your hands and let God put his open hand in yours and release his provision to you. It's yours today. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. He's merciful and bountiful in all his works. The Lord is righteous in all his ways. He's right in the way he does things. The Lord is nigh or near unto them that call upon him. Now listen to this. To all that call upon him in truth. John 17, 17 says the word of God is truth. When we call on God through the word of God, he answers. That's what he's answering today, his word of truth. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him, that respect, honor, and reverence him. He also will hear their cry and save them. The Lord preserves all that love him. You got any love for him this morning? Amen. Then you're preserved. But all the wicked will he destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. And let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Folks, we're going to have eternity to bless God's name. Somebody said, well, how long is eternity? Hmm. Hey, it's forever, folks. There's no end. Time isn't going to be, when we, when we get out of this age we're in, time isn't going to be what it is today. It'll be different. And it'll just go on and on. And we'll have time to praise him and to worship him for all he's done. My, 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 what a time we're going to have. Now, amen. In 2016, the Lord spoke this to Jerry Seville. There is a level of prosperity that you have never known or even hoped for. Now, when we talk about prosperity, people's mind goes over to money. That is just a part of prosperity. Health or healing in your body is prosperity. Healing in your relationships, that's prosperity. Healing in your emotions, that's prosperity. God wants to prosper the whole man. Spirit, soul, body, 
relationships, finances, every aspect of your life. So when there is a level of prosperity that you've never known or even hoped for, but I am empowering all those who dare to believe that it is available. I will show them how to tap into it and it will begin to manifest in their lives in this coming year, saith the Lord. Somebody said, well, that was 2016. God's word stands once he puts it out there, it stands forever. This is just as good a word for us today as it was when he gave it to Jerry Seville in 2016. Now, Bill Winston, I'm going to quote him. If you're not in the know, you're not in the flow. <laughs> Let me say that again. If you're not in the know, you're not in the flow. If you don't know healing and healing is flowing, you won't flow in it. If you don't know the anointing of the Holy Spirit and it's flowing, you won't flow in it. But if you know it, you'll flow in it. Amen. I don't know about you, but I've experienced the anointing. And I like it. And I like to flow with it. And it's in here now. Two weeks ago, I mean, this place, it was just pouring anointing in this place. That was the week when I had a vision and I saw those doors fling wide open and the army of angels just came piling in here. They got down, some came down the middle, some went down there. They started marching up and down the aisles and they were here for the whole service. Yeah. Folks, they're here today. I don't have to see them to believe they're here. I know they're here. Amen? So if we're in the know, then we're going to be in the flow. Amen? So poke your neighbor and tell them, get in the know so you're in the flow. Now, God wants to manifest his glory in our midst, but it doesn't just happen. People think because the Bible says, well, wait on God, and God will do when he gets to it, to whatever he's going to do. God is waiting for us to connect with his supernatural. We talked about that a few months ago, connecting ourselves to the supernatural. We've got a part to play. And there are actually three prerequisites. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago, but the Lord told me to bring this up again. There are pre three prerequisites to operating in the glory. Number one, we've got to hunger for it. Number two, we've got to pray for it. And number three, we've got to believe for it. So I'm going to do something here this morning with you. I'm going to dare you to believe. And as I was thinking about this, I thought about days when my childhood and on the playground, when we'd have recess in school, Rob, we would go out onto the field and we would play this game where maybe y'all might have done this. One group would line up on one side and one group would line up on the other side. And then we'd all take hands with your group. And then the captain of the group would say, Red Rover, Red Rover, I dare so-and-so to come over. And then it was your job to run over, and if you could break through those hands, then you went back to your team. But if you didn't, you had to join that team. By the end of the recess, whoever had more people won. I don't know what we won, but we won. <laughs> well, I'm going to dare you to believe today. Now, on the old playground, maybe you guys will remember this, there was a dare. That was pretty big. But then there was the double dog dare. And boy, when you got a double dog dare, Bill, you had to get with it. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to double dog dare you to believe today. Amen. Turn to first and second Peter. Turn to second Peter chapter one. Shout it, I'm ready to believe. I'm ready to believe. 2 Peter chapter 1. Let's see if I can read through this. Just the first chapter. 
Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Peter has just announced three very, very important aspects to setting our Christian life in order. And if we'll follow these aspects right here, we can bring order to our Christian life. Number one, he identified who he was and what he was in God. Number two, he talked about obtaining faith, but to obtain it, we're going to have to see the value in it. Precious faith. <coughs> Excuse me. Precious faith. Value faith. And then number three, the righteousness of God. Folks, we're going to have to come to a conclusion and believe something. God is right in his ways. And he's also right in, his, in what he tells us to do. Amen. So, let's take a look. Keep your place there in 2 Peter. But let's go over to Romans chapter 1 for a moment. Before we get into those three. And I'm not going to get through all three of those today. So, relax. Unless we get 10 feet of snow out there, then we might as well stay, right? Mm -hmm. Amen. Romans chapter 1. We're supposed to get two inches. We're not in Buffalo. <laughs> Romans chapter 1. So, as much as is in me is. What a statement. Well, obviously, whatever's in us is in there, right? But what Paul's saying, what's in me is what I'm about to preach. I'm ready to preach Romans 1 verse 15. What I'm about to preach that is in me is going to come out. Well, I feel the same way. What I'm about to preach here today and teach, and I'm going to be more in the, in the uh, anointing of the prophet's teaching, is about to come out. I'm ready to preach the gospel to you at, who are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed. There's no disgrace whatsoever ever when I preach the gospel of Christ. When I preach the good news of the anointed one with his anointing. When I preach the good news about the yoke destroying, burden destroying, devil destroying power of almighty God. There's no disgrace in that. Not ashamed of it, Paul says. Why? It, that gospel of Christ, is the power of God unto salvation. Here we go. To everyone that believes. So you know what? There's no power in the gospel of God to somebody who doesn't believe it. Whether they're in the church or outside the church. If they don't believe in the gospel of Christ, there's no power of God in it for them. But there is for us to believe. So I dare you to believe this morning in the gospel of Christ. Because it's the power unto salvation. Salvation, the deliverance from everything the devil is attacking with. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Colossians 1.13 says we have already been delivered from the power of darkness and translated into the kingdom of his dear son. We don't live in darkness anymore, folks. Darkness has no authority over us. Amen? Yeah. But it's to everyone that believes. Verse 17. For therein in the gospel of Christ is the righteousness of God revealed. 
In other words, folks, what God just said in verse 16, the gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes that is right. We got to believe in it. And then he says this, from faith to faith. From faith to faith. What's he talking about? Romans 12, 3 says, To every man has been dealt the measure of faith. But we've got an obligation to that, to, to have that grow. And I've had people argue with me that have gone through the years on this. Oh, God's given you all the faith you ever need. That's it. You got it. And that's all there is to it. No. Faith is a spiritual force that must be fed in order to grow. Let me show you. In the letters that Paul wrote to Thessalonica, in the first letter, chapter 3, verse 10, Paul says this, Night and day, praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. That which is lacking in your life. Paul's saying, I want to get there and come and see you face to face so I can help perfect what's been lacking in your faith. So something must have been lacking in their faith that's Thessalonica. And Paul came face to face, taught them, preached to them, and look at the second letter, chapter 1, verse 3. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet or right, because that your faith grows exceedingly. Paul went to that church, preached face to face with them, and it was working. Their faith was growing exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all toward each other abounds. See, faith works by love, so you can't teach faith without love. Okay? Now back to Romans chapter 1 again. For therein, verse 17, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. That comment is made four times in the Bible. So when we look at this over here, once again, uh, yes, all right, before I go over there, go to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1. There is a progression to faith, folks. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance. In Christ we have obtained an inheritance. Being predestinated. Preordained. Preplanned, if you would. We've taken in some circles and this predestination has been taught that it's something that is automatically going to happen. Have you ever gone into a restaurant, and this, this is a dumb question because I know the answer. Have you ever gone into the restaurant and ordered something and got the wrong order? They can get it wrong. Now God can't get the order wrong, but we can. And when God orders something in our life, Sometimes we don't always follow the orders. It's God's predestined plan for something here. But we've got to get involved in it. According to the purpose of him who works all things after the counsel of his own will. That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Now here it is, verse 13. In whom, in Christ, you also trusted after that, you heard the word of truth, 
after you were, heard the word of truth, you trusted it. The gospel of your salvation or the gospel of Christ. It will also, after that, after you heard it again, you believe. So you trust it. Now you believe it. Then you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. That sealing of that trust and belief in you is the confidence or the faith that we have in God and in his word. And our trust and our faith, our belief in everything, all of it has to come in God first. We got to trust God. We got to believe God. We have faith in God first. Then we find out that God and His Word are one. John 1 1. God and His Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. So we start to trust His Word. We start to believe His Word. Then we have faith in His Word. We have confidence in it. All right? So, when we go back over here to Peter, and let's go now to 2 Peter again. We have Peter, first of all, identifying himself, then telling us that you got to obtain a faith by giving it value. Now, God gave us all the faith we need which in a sense he is doing through his word, but if it, it all came at once, then we've got to be very cautious with some of that teaching because faith has value. It's precious. When something is precious, you, you can't put a, uh, a total monetary value on it. It's precious. It, it's almost to the point of its total value. Total value. It's a total value of something in my life. So we have to put a value on faith and we'll get to that. And then he says, through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ, Everything God does, everything God says, everything God tells us to do is right. Now this morning, we want to look at something here, what Peter did to start out. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ. Peter identified himself. He identified himself by his name by his calling as an apostle, but notice this, he said, even as an apostle, I serve Christ. I serve him. I got a high ranking position here, but I still serve Christ. I serve his word, and I serve what he's talking about. The first thing that we've got to do here, if we're going to bring our Christian life into order, is identify what God says about us. What God says about us. And we're going to look at three things real quick here this morning. First of all, you are the temple of the living God. Second of all, you are a son of of God. And third, and this is the one where we start to lose some people, you are anointed. You are anointed. Somehow, in some circles, we've got the impression that the only anointing is on the, the fivefold ministry. No, it's on everyone. It's in everyone. So let's take a look at this, and I'm going to do this again. I dare you to believe all of this. Go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. First Corinthians 3. Go 
verse 16. Know you not? Now, let's understand something here. Paul is writing this letter to a Pentecostal church. A church that has, is born again. A church that is operating in the gifts of the Spirit. A church that is, is baptized in the Spirit, speaking in other tongues. They're operating in the gifts of the Spirit and the gifts of ministry and all this. And Paul says this to this church. Know ye not that you are the temple of God? Don't you know you're the temple of God? And the Spirit of God dwells in you. I am amazed sometimes at some people I talk to and they don't believe they have the Holy Spirit at this point. They're born again. They consider themselves born again. But they don't know they've got the Holy Spirit. Folks, you couldn't have got born again without the Holy Spirit. Go over to 2 Corinthians. Well, Brother Jerry, how come you're on this right now? Because the Lord told me to. So if there's an issue, I guess we need to take it up with him. Right over there, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? None. And the word fellowship is actually partnership. He's not saying, now you can't talk to the unrighteous, you can't. Uh, carry out a conversation with them. What he's saying is you can't get into partnership with them. Partnership means you're in agreement. And righteousness has no agreement with unrighteousness, as we'll see here. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? What communion has light with darkness? None. What concord has Christ with Belial? Belial means Satan. Or what has he that believes with an infidel. An infidel is a person who doesn't believe. He doesn't believe in what God says. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? None. For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. I will walk in them. I will be their God. And they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them. Come out from among the unbelievers, the unrighteous, the darkness, the Satan people, the people who don't believe, and the people who are in idol worship. Come out from among them. And be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord God Almighty. He said this. He said this. We are the temple of the living God. He's living in us right now. He's living in you. If you're born again, you got God living inside of you. You got the Holy Spirit in there right now. Amen. You've got the Holy Spirit in you right now. Amen. We've got the guide, the teacher, the anointer in us right now. Amen. We're his temple. Go to John chapter. John, the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 12. Are you all there? You need to put your eyes on this. But as many as received him, 
has received God, received Christ, received his word. To them gave he power to become the sons of God. He gave them power to become sons of God to them that believe on his name. Well, Brother Jerry, I believe in his name. Jesus, he's Savior. Okay? That's wonderful. Do you believe in his name of Jehovah Sidkenu? Our righteousness? Do you believe in Jehovah Jireh? The name, my provider. Do you believe in Jehovah Rapha? my healer. Do you believe in Jehovah, Jehovah Nisi, the banner or the protection of love over us, where God will protect you every time you walk out those doors? Do you believe in Jehovah Shalom, my peace? Do you believe in Jehovah Shema? Always present. Always with us. Do you believe in the name Jehovah Savoy, the Lord of hosts, the Lord over the angelic hosts of heaven that are assigned to us to help us? How much of that do we believe? Do we believe in the name? Christ, the anointed one of God, with his anointing. Hallelujah. We got to believe on that name. And when we do, we're sons of God. Well, what does that mean? Let's find out. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter. Romans chapter 8, verse 29. For whom he, God, did foreknow, God also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son. Well, yes, I'm a son, but I'm not the son. Follow this. That he, Christ, might be the firstborn son among many brethren. Did you realize your sonship puts you in the same category with God the Father as Jesus Christ? Well, Brother Jerry, you're going to have to prove that to me. Okay. Back up into this. Let's go to Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The Spirit of God is known in John 16, 13, as the Spirit of truth. He's our guide. He's our teacher. And if you're going to be led by the word of God and the spirit of truth, then you're going to be a son of God. You have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. We're not to be afraid. Over nine years ago, when that doctor looked at me, and he said, we got the report back. You have stage four cancer. It's in your thyroid, your throat. There's lymph nodes in your chest. 
and he, I, I've, I've known this doctor for a long time. He sat there with tears in his eyes when he told me. And then he looked at me, he said, that didn't even phase you. I said, no, why should it? I know the healer. I said that to him. Amen. My healer is Jesus Christ. And we went through some stuff with it. Lynn and I got into agreement. Our girls, our daughters got into agreement with it. This church got into agreement with it. Yeah. I didn't put it out on Facebook. <clears throat> said, Why not? Because I don't want a bunch of prayers that don't go anywhere or mean anything. I don't want somebody praying. Well, if it be your will. I know God's will. Yeah. God's will was to heal me. Amen. Period. So I called Rod McLean, who you all know. I called Gary Wood, who y'all know. I called Joe McCroskey, he's been here. And I called Tim Overly, and most of you know him. I called those four men, and we got into agreement that the healing power of the blood of Jesus and the anointing of the Holy Spirit would come on me and drive that cancer out. In April, the following year, 2013, they had sent me over to St. Anne's to a radiologist. And he was saying, I, I looked at this chart, and he said, you know, this is what we're going to have to do from a radiology standpoint. And I looked at him, I said, you're not going to do anything with that. My Jesus, my God, has healed me. Now, I found out in talking to him a little bit, he was a man of Buddhist religion. So he didn't have any idea what I was saying. So he says, all right, we've got to do some tests. So, okay. We did these tests, blood tests, x-rays. He got everything back. He says, uh, this was a Monday. He says, I want you to come back Wednesday. We're going to do these all over again. I said, okay. So I come back. Get them all over again on Wednesday. He gets the test, gets the results, and says, I need you to come back Friday. We're going to do them all again. Okay. So I go back Friday. They do all the tests again. Here's this Buddhist man sitting in front of me, and here's exactly what he said, didn't he? He says, sir, your God has given you a miracle. There is no cancer anywhere in your body. See, we got to believe in him. We're a son to the very extent of what Jesus is as a son. We've got sonship rights, folks. For we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 says, We have not been given the spirit of fear, but we have been given the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. We've got a sound mind. 2 Corinthians says, You have the mind of Christ. Hope your neighbor would tell him, you thought I was stupid, but I got the mind of Christ. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We're the son of the living God. Hallelujah. We have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. See, there's Father God, and then there's Daddy God. Father God is the corrector and the disciplinarian, and that's a good thing, folks. But he's also Daddy. I, I remember after I got born again, 1978, our oldest daughter was seven, and Lynn's parents had a swimming pool out back, out in the backyard, 
and, and this was in Buffalo. And in Buffalo, you got to use that pool that one really good day you get good weather. <laughs> now, there's people from Buffalo watching, and they're just staring at me. But I was out by the pool sitting there. I had uh, her mother's Bible. I just got born again. I didn't, I didn't have <coughs> much knowledge. I had this Bible in my hand. And Nikki, our oldest daughter, who was seven, came out by the lounge chair I was sitting in, put her hands on my face like this, turned it towards her, and she said, Daddy, I love you, and walked away. Boy, did she mess up. She didn't know. At that point, she could have asked me anything. I'd have moved heaven and earth to get it to her. Amen. God's the same way. We are sons of God. When we come to God and say with a pure heart, I love you, Daddy. What we read in Psalm 145, his hands are open. With the provision we need. Amen. Amen. Let me move on so I can finish this before I get some high signs from Nelson back there. I got to blame him. <laughs> <laughs> He's got big shoulders. <laughs> The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. We are equally joint heirs with Christ. John chapter 16 describes to us the Holy Spirit will show us what belongs to God, what belongs to Jesus, that also belongs to us and how to receive it and tap into that. Now, he says here, he makes a comment, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. And folks, the word suffer there means if we will gain a like action as a son of God, we will be joint heirs. With Jesus. Everything he has. Is ours. Yes we're going to suffer persecution. People are going to get mad. When things start coming into your hands. Because they didn't get it. But then we can show them. Here's what I did to get it. Amen. Now there's one more point. Christ like. Anointing. Folks we have the anointing. Turn very quickly to Luke 24. I'll try and finish this up real quick. Luke 24, 49. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. The promise he's talking about you'll find in John 14. And you'll find that it's the promise of the Holy Spirit. I send the promise of the Holy Spirit of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. That word endued means for us to sink into, slip into, or put on. What is the anointing? The anointing means to rub or smear all over. Now, they're not doing it today here in Ohio, but they'll probably be doing it in a few months. They'll go out there and anoint themselves with suntan lotion. But when we are anointed and having the Holy Spirit and his power rubbed on us, smeared all over us, we walk in his power the same way Jesus did. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Well, God is with us in the same manner. Yes. Amen? Hallelujah. Go to uh, Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you, yet you shall receive power 
After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So after the Holy Spirit comes on us, we receive this power, the spiritual force. The spiritual force that is there to produce success in our life. You shall be a witness unto me, unto Jesus, both in Jerusalem and all Judea, Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. So anywhere we're at, we are to be the very evidence or the very proof of Jesus Christ in our life. And we can't do that without the power. It's the power of the Holy Spirit on us that shows the church and the world that the anointed one with his anointing is still alive and well and still working in this world. Amen. On us. On us. Well, now, Brother Jerry, I don't know about that. I don't know. Okay. Will you believe John's writing? First John chapter 2. Verse 20. But you have an ocean. Who has it? You have an unction from the Holy One. And you know all things. In other words, 1 Corinthians 2.16, you have the mind of Christ. Paul wrote to the Philippian church and said, let this mind be in you that was in Christ. And Christ thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Now understand something. Where are we equal to God in? In our thinking and our actions. Why? Because we're thinking like him. We're acting like him. We're walking like him. We're talking like him. Amen. And we become a witness to the world. Look at verse 27. We'll, we'll get to more on verse 20 next week when we talk about this. That word unction can also be translated to anointed. So we have an anointed unction. An anointed voice. We'll get to that next week. Verse 27. But the anointing which you have received of him abides in you. Now listen very closely today, please. And you need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you of all things, and the anointing is truth, and the anointing is no lie, and even as it is taught you, you shall abide in that anointing. Now, I'm standing up here, and I'm teaching, preaching. I guess I've done a little of both this morning. But if you're getting anything out of this, you're getting it because it's the anointing that's teaching you. It's my anointing coupled with your anointing joined together to begin to understand the Word of God. Is that making any sense here? Well, I thought we need men teachers. We do. But what we need men teachers or women teachers, what we need is anointed teachers. People who are willing to spend some time in the Word and meditate in it to pull out everything that God has written in those words. And then as we teach and speak that word it's the anointing in us bringing the word to you and the anointing in you that's bringing the understanding it's really the Holy Spirit talking to himself when we're teaching and preaching when you think about it 
We have the same anointing that Jesus Christ had on him. We're endued with that power. Let me finish this up. And now, little children, abide in him that when he shall appear, we have may have confidence or faith and not be ashamed before him that is coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone that does righteousness is born of him. We've got to act this out, folks. We've got to dare to believe the voice of faith. We've got to dare to believe that you are the temple of the living God. We've got to dare to believe that you're a son just like Jesus Christ. And we've got to dare to believe that we are anointed of the Holy Spirit just like Christ. I've been talking to God a lot about this. Why are we not seeing the church do what we're told to do in Mark chapter 16? And his answer was, they don't believe it. And then he asked me, do you believe it? I said, yes. He said, then do it. It is up to us, folks, to pray for the sick that don't know how to receive the, the healing from God, from Jesus and the Holy Spirit the way we should. Thank God for it. Folks, right now, if you saw the reports, the hospitals are full. They're full. There were emergency rooms turning people away in Columbus, Ohio the other day, sending them to other hospitals because they had no more room for anybody. My daughter works in a hospital. She said there was a point then where they were laying them out in the hallways in, in stretchers because we didn't have any more room. And yet here we ought to have a place where they can come when they're sick and not spend 14 hours in, a, in an emergency room waiting to be looked at, but come into a church and receive their healing and walk out without it. Without their self. Excuse me. People laying in hospital beds today instead of sitting in church. And I don't mean to demean them. We got to get a hold of this. And I dare you to believe it. Amen? Amen. We need to all believe it. We've all got a part to add to this. We thank you. Those of you who have joined us from Facebook and YouTube, I pray you got something out of this this morning. And come back next week. We're going to do part two of this on obtaining precious faith. We love you. May God have touched you today with the power of the anointing. And if there's any sickness in your bodies right now, that that sickness goes because it has no right to the body of Christ. And we thank you right now, Jesus, for the stripes you took for the healing of your body. And we thank you for it. And that goes for anybody here. That anointing loosed upon you right now. Thank you. God bless you. Nelson, what do you got for?